Good evening, all. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Thursday, the 18th of April, 2024. So we still have the higher for longer. We saw jobless claims come out today. They came out again, showing a strong labor market. We have no economic data of any material importance at this point scheduled for tomorrow. Anything can happen. We are hearing that over the weekend, uh, House Speaker Johnson will bring four separate bills, at least this is the plan, to the floor for a vote, breaking down uh, the TikTok bill into one. There's some other things in that bill as well. And then bills for Taiwan, Israel, and the Ukraine. And obviously the goal here is to try to get money to our allies and get whatever we can done for them. In terms of economic news, just not there at this point. Uh, you know, the market is obviously correcting. You're seeing that as you take a look behind me to QQQ down again, IWM. Dow is up a fraction, but you were down in SPY. Amazon down another $2. I expect that pullback. So long-term, it still looks good on the long-term charts. Arc down a little bit, Tesla down another $5. So at first 170, then 160. Now we've broken the 150 level in that. That's pretty important. NVIDIA up a little bit, but reaching for a new low of 824. We haven't been down there in a little while. In the metal markets, they're still holding on. Now for the futures, you have signals where the momentum has been lost to the upside, but price is advancing. So I've got divergence taking place there. Um, you can see the car makers sort of stable, not really a lot going on. Most of them getting a little bit of a bid, but Tesla. Tesla's just under a lot of pressure, but things that normally are strong aren't strong right now. And that's the way you've got to look at it because the whole market's correcting. And the question is, when does the money on the sideline decide to come back into the market? Now we're going to finish up today with Citigroup and tomorrow I'm going to start reviewing for the weekend eBay. Haven't done that in a long time and I'd like to do that one. As you can see, you fell. You've had a two-day bounce in that. I'm not that impressed with it. Uh, the market's got a higher high, lower low, not doing very much here. So where is it grabbing its support? Well, it didn't make it to the 100-day average. We see the resistance. That number is against the 18-day moving average of closes. So it must have been the Bollinger Band, which is exactly what it was. And that's given the market cause to bounce back over it. But if it's really bearish, it'll start locking in against it on the downside again. We'll see tomorrow, we'll get a pretty good feel. Why do I think you're not getting new selling? Part of the reason is that uh, you're oversold. So the market's already come down pretty well, as we can see here from the 6260 zone back down to the 56 level. 57 level, and it seems to be stable in there. And it's caught in between the upper Bollinger Band peak and a lower one. I don't see anything exciting. DraftKings, well, now it's under the lower Bollinger Band. It could make a run here for the 100-day average. It's oversold, so betting on that, it's difficult. But in order to get a bearish embedded reading, you first have to enter oversold territory, and both the numbers today for the first time under 20. Two more days of that, and this market has a problem. We then look at uh, the gasoline funding coming down. And I have one of my uh, subscribers, Jim, I'll just leave it at that. He wrote me and he brought up a point that I hadn't thought about. The Jewish holiday of Passover is, I think, April 22nd. And would the state of Israel want to attack over the holiday? You know, that's an interesting thought. Uh, you know, the allies don't want Israel to do anything against Iran right now. The pressures are immense. Sanctions were put on today by both the UK and the United States on them. The US has had the IRG there, you know, on a terror list since 2019. So they just keep adding as much as they can and they're doing whatever they can. And nobody wants to shut off oil from the United States perspective in the Biden administration because that could hurt him in the election as it comes up. If oil should spike, can you imagine going into the election and gasoline goes up 30, 40 cents, a dollar a gallon? It would be pretty rough for him. As it is, we are going after right now the Venezuelans. Again, 
in moderation, all right? And the reason is the president doesn't want to cause a run on the, on the energy prices. He's able to weaponize things going into the election. That's the advantage a president has. In XLF, you are still looking here in the service fund. Market just a minor bounce. It's about to embed. Did it embed? Let's look. Both numbers were under 20 today. The day before, come on, it should come in here. Day before they were under 20 and the day before they were. So you're fully embedded. What does that mean? When you embed, it means that you've converted the momentum from being oversold to locking into a bear pattern. So that tells me on the rallies, the pros are willing sellers of the market alpha daily chart until the red line closes over 21. So I remain now even more bearish than I was before. In XLI, just oversold, running the lower Bollinger Band. I call this the Gorilla Glue trade. And that's because each day in succession, the market hits the Bollinger Band and just sticks to it. And when that happens, it starts working on the momentum to go down, gets oversold, then it can lock into the bearish momentum, and it takes on a life of its own. This is never, in my opinion, a bullish sign. That's still a sign of a lot of weakness. We then get to Freeport. And interesting, I just keep reading all these fascinating articles as to Freeport and the others, as to the position they will be in over time as different central banks cut rates, and that's, that's the next step we'll see in the summertime. As they cut their rates to spur on their economy, you're going to get demand in copper, and you don't have the supplies to meet a lot of increased demand, especially if China picks up its momentum, which I don't know. You know, I mentioned China. I write tonight that China has gone back this year. Remember, it stopped in June of last year reporting youth unemployment. When they don't like something, they have a way of fixing it. What's the fix? They don't like the stock market's down. You can't go short. You can't sell on the open. You can't sell on the close. They have a bunch of rules that they enact. Well, they didn't like how at 21% youth unemployment had soared, so they stopped reporting it. But when it fell to 15%, 16%, they said, oh, we can start reporting it again. Right now, it's at 15.3%. That's a high number anywhere you go. But if they can spur things on, those people could get job back in industry if they can get their economy going again. In RSPD, all I hear, and I hope you're hearing the same, is the credit cards are reporting the lower income people making minimum payments, bit stretched out. We're seeing that we are seeing more and more people unable to completely pay and pay down the way that they did on cards. Got to be careful here. You've got an embedded reading. The market's not able to get back so far to the eight uh, to the hundred day average in green. And it's just to the right hand side of the Bollinger Band and falling. This is still a bearish picture, not a bullish one. In the home builders, I saw that D.R. Horton today came out with favorable guidance going forward. We saw home sales today, and if you look at them and you look at the price of homes, the problem continues to be, number one, there is more supply, okay? We've gone from a 2.7 month supply to 3.2. Problem is people aren't qualifying for mortgages. I mean, you're over 7% on Freddie Mac on 30-year mortgages now. Back up, yeah, over it. So this becomes the issue. We keep reading about new properties for rent. There is a good article today. I think the article's in Bloomberg. I read Bloomberg, I read Reuters, I read AP. There, there's just so many things that I read. And in reading it, they show how in the South, property rents are coming down, whereas in the Midwest and the Northeast, that isn't the case. There's not enough property yet coming on the markets there. When they do, and if they do, that could handle for the Fed some help in starting to bring down shelter costs. And if shelter costs come down, CPI costs come down. You're not there quite yet. You have different worlds right through the center of the country, different things happening as to what's going on. Uh, in the energy sector, so again, if the market puts in a weather, pre uh, not a weather, a war premium over the weekend, you'll get a bid tomorrow in crude. If not, now I'm wondering with the Passover holiday, maybe they won't put in that war premium. Do we sink and continue to sink back as higher interest rates have taken their toll and are taking their toll 
on demand in this market. You can see how you've been slipping down. You are in oversold territory. You're not trending per se yet. That could happen tomorrow, but you're not there. You need to close lower again tomorrow. In gold, here's the divergence that I'm trying to explain. You have the trend up with higher lows, but you have lower highs. I showed that yesterday. And you've lost the bullish momentum as it's drifting down. You either go up and prove momentum is wrong by making a new high over here. And if it can't do that, the odds favor you're going to drop back to wherever the 18-day average is. You can see how the market has just narrowed in its range. It's fighting that battle, in my opinion. Silver has got the identical battle. Same one, and with today now, with today, you've got the higher lows and lower highs. They both joined in together, they're in sync. In the copper market, you lost the bullish embedded reading, and again, are you gonna go for that high or you're gonna come back to the 18-day average? All around it, the metals look, and they're able to go up, why I don't know, as the rest of the market just craters. In fact, this morning in my uh, written update, I wrote in the early, update, I said, don't get caught into buying this rally. I didn't think it was going to hold. And by late in the day, that came true. In TLT, so this is the rally that pros are still selling. That's what I continue to think. If the red line closes over 21, a good sign that maybe short covering is going to hit the market. When we look at UUP, I could be wrong. You know, I've put out a special report on what? The euro currency. Well, 57, 58% of the UUP, the dollar index, is made up of the euro. If I'm buying the dollar, it's the same thing as almost going short the euro. And this market's still looking good. And I'm still looking at a long positions in the dollar index for clients. And as I just said, you got to pay attention to that. And you can see here how this market might embed now. If it embeds, I get very excited about what I just put out in that report. And I'll tell you about the report in a minute. Both numbers are under 20. Yesterday, both under 20. And on a day before, they weren't. So tomorrow's the key day. You have Tuesday under 20, Wednesday under 20. Oh, I, I'm wrong. Today, you got your embedded reading. So until this red line closes over 21 tonight, looking at this, no, nah, she's embedded. So as I said, you've got to start looking at what I was talking about. And I put out a special report. And in the report, I talk about currency. Specifically, I think the euro could fall a lot against the U.S. dollar. Could I be wrong? Of course I could be wrong. But the reasons are given. I go through the seasonal charts. I go through our price counts. I give you the impact of world events that's taking place right now on the market. It's all sensitive for right now. And the report leaves our website tomorrow. So I put it up. They're only good for three days on the website. So if you're going to look at it, now is the time to do it into tomorrow. Go Saturday and it won't be there. irapstein.com under the word research. And you can move your cursor up to the top here and just give that a click and that'll play as well. With that, I'm irapstein. You have yourself a good day and I will talk to you all tomorrow morning. First thing, take care.